Hey, Travis here. So, what is a GMO? In short, a GMO is the laboratory process of taking out a desirable gene from one species and placing it into another. This is how we get things like glowfish. The fluorescent gene from a jellyfish is placed into a zebrafish. So how exactly do we do this? Well, this idiot doesn't know. So I'll tell you. The most common method for plants is with a gene gun. It's literally the process of shooting a desired gene directly into the plant. We can also place a desired gene, like this one for blue flowers, into a bacteria. Then by placing the bacteria on a plant... Uh, how am I going to animate this? Eh, screw it. Then by placing the bacteria on a plant, the bacteria will incorporate its DNA into the plant, giving us the desired trait. This happens naturally in nature as well. One of the coolest ways is by retrovirus-mediated gene transfer. Whoa. Too much science words. How we use a retrovirus, in very short, is that a desirable gene is placed into the RNA of a retrovirus vector, and that vector is inserted into a host. The vector then inserts its RNA and polymerase into a host cell, where it's transcribed into DNA. The retrovirus then incorporates its now DNA into the host genome. The host then treats the viral DNA as part of its own genome, replicating the viral genes along with its own genes. These vectors are also used for gene therapy, which is extremely interesting. I highly recommend you look it up. Yeah, nobody's gonna look that up. What many people don't realize is that we've been manipulating our food for thousands of years. This is due to humans selectively breeding plants to produce more desirable characteristics. Let's look at corn. We've all bought, eaten, or at least seen corn. Yep, we've all seen corn. But well, what about this? Teosinte. Long ago, the Mayans took this plant and bred it in a way to have something that looked more like this. Look at how much more food you can get out of this compared to this. It's clearly a desirable trait to be larger. <laughs> then over time, more selective breeding resulted in the corn we know today. This took the Mayans thousands of years to develop corn. This same method of selective breeding is how we domesticated the dog. It's how you can start with a wolf and end up with a poodle. Now some of you might be thinking that this is natural. This is the natural process of selective breeding where we end up with a result that more fits our needs. Well, let's look at another common food item. This is a banana, and this is a wild banana. How many of you remember the last time you had to spit out the seeds? None of you, right? You? No? No, you don't. A plant needs seeds to reproduce, and the sole purpose to even produce a fruit is for seed dispersal, or seed nutrients. So we've taken the banana and selectively bred out the ability for it to produce seeds and reproduce. We did this, by the way, by giving the plant an odd set of chromosomes. So taking away a plant's ability to reproduce is the most unnatural thing you can do to a plant. Think about if humans could have all the sex they wanted, but could never actually reproduce. What? Are you kidding? That'd be great. Yeah, I guess using humans was a bad example. Well, anyways, this traditional method is how you've gotten many of the fruits and vegetables you know today. So are traditional plant breeding methods really natural? Maybe. Because these processes do happen all the time in nature, just more slowly. It's called natural selection. And the results that come about is something that allows the plant to survive better in its own environment. So by artificially selecting traits, we are just speeding up the process, but to something more fitting to us. Random beneficial mutations are often what drives natural selection, and we as humans will often select those mutations as desirable traits as well. Which brings us to our next method of how you've gotten some of the foods you know today, the method of mutagenesis. Mutagenesis is the process of exposing seeds to chemicals or radiation in hopes that the random mutation results in a desirable trait. You might think that this is the act of a mad scientist, dousing things with chemicals and radiation, but actually we've been doing this to plants since the 1930s, and still continue to do this today. It has resulted in over 3,200 different plant varieties in use, and 75% of them are used as crop plants. For example, a strain of barley released in the UK was doused with gamma rays and resulted in a shorter, more salt-tolerant plant. This barley is used to create beer and whiskey. 
So is all this bad? What seems better to you? The traditional selective breeding process where thousands of unknown genes are transferred from one plant to another, creating hybrids? Or dousing seeds with radiation in hopes of a favorable mutation? Or the process of transferring one specific gene or select few known genes into a plant? Let's look at why GMOs are made in more detail. I'll use BT corn as an example. Probably the only GMO food you've ever heard of. Nope, never heard of it. Crops like BT corn have a gene from a bacterium that naturally produces the BT delta endotoxin pesticide. This pesticide is highly selective in that it only affects certain caterpillar larvae and does not harm any other orders such as birds, bees, or humans. BT corn has saved farmers from millions of dollars worth of damage from the European corn borer. On top of that, farmers save money by not having to spray pesticides on fields, and there is no pesticide runoff from the crops into the environment. BT corn was not hastily added to fields either. The EPA considered over 20 years of human and animal testing before it approved BT corn. In fact, GMOs are more tested than any other food. So just where are these GMOs in my supermarket, you ask? Well, let's look at how common they are. 88% of all your corn is a GMO, 94% of soy, and 95% of sugar beets. Think about your processed foods and how many of them contain high fructose corn syrup and soy-based products. It's estimated that somewhere between 70 and 80% of all processed food contains GMO products. So labeling things GMO might become a daunting process to do and to define. For example, would everything that contains any trace of a GMO be labeled? Or would there be a threshold limit on how much GMO ingredients a product can have before it's labeled as such? How do we decide what that threshold limit is? Also, most people are just completely ignorant about what a GMO actually is, so labeling something as such might be just completely useless. Some people may only think a GMO is bad because that's just what they've heard. Hmm. All right, well, that's all I have for now. I also encourage you to research a lot of this on your own. Yeah, I'm not going to research anything. Why are you even here? Why do I even invite you? I hate you. I, I hate you so much. Hey guys, I hope you learned something today. Be sure to share, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, if you watch my other videos in this order, you can watch my hair getting longer. Yeah, that's the whole reason I actually made these videos was so you can watch my hair get longer over the course of the year. <laughs> I didn't even want to teach you anything. <laughs> also, fun fact about making this video, this was the first one I ever made, but it was just so awful and terrible and I hated it that I redid all the presentation parts. Yeah, that's why I look like this and the other me was all better looking. Alright, that's all I have for now.